I'm looking forward to what you all are doing. I'm super excited to be a part of what you guys are doing. The mold that you all are, are, are building is, is a powerful thing. I've been watching how you guys have been collaborating and I just want to applaud you. I'm, I'm watching you guys. I'm learning from you. I'm admiring you. So thank you for having me on. Each other, man, the Academy Podcast definitely is yes, the support of Recharge Pod or whatever y'all gonna call this thing, man. Whatever it is. <laughs> hey, this is Seth Yolorda. Yo, what's going on? This is Pastor Noah Washington. This is Pastor Puck Fordham. This is Pastor Tina Kerger. I'm Pastor Sean Moss. This is Pastor JD. This is Pastor Kimberly Mann. What's up, everybody? Pierre Quinn here. What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Kyle Crawford, and you are plugged in to the Recharge. 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 Podcast. What's up, everybody? This is the Recharge Podcast, and I am Kyle. I'm here with uh, my co-host, Meshach, and uh, we are here with an, an amazing guest. Uh, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. One of my mentors, one the person who introduced me to my wife, the person who married us, and the person who did our marriage counseling. Uh, and she recently spoke for our service, Recharge Worship. Uh, if you missed it, go look at our Facebook site. Go look at our YouTube page. Uh, Pastor Man, did you notice uh, the sermon? Did you notice uh, it, it was She amazing. ripped it. Yeah, man. She ripped that joint. Yeah, oh, the privilege. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, if you have not listened to the sermon, go to our uh, Recharge uh, worship page and yeah. listen to it, view it, and then share it uh, to bless others because our sister, Pastor Kim Man, came with a major word uh, that not only challenged us, but also moved us forward. And so we're so excited on our Recharge podcast to have uh, none other than Pastor Kim Man with us. Uh, and so listen, let's just jump right into this joint. But before we do uh, with our, our podcast, Pastor Kim, just introduce yourself, plug in what you're currently working on, because we want to make sure <laughs> that our listeners will follow you uh, uh, from here on out. What's up, everybody out there? How you doing? How you feeling? How you been? Um, I am Pastor Kimberly Mann. Um, I serve as the Associate Youth Director for South Central Conference. So that means I just get to have fun and do what God told me to do. Um, <laughs> and that, that's really awesome. You know, really what I do. Um, we've got worship services that are happening for our young people on Friday night. So on Friday night, um, if you're not doing anything, um, we want you to have your young people tune in. It's 13 and older. Um, it's called Federation Live. It's Fridays at 7.30. You can find us on our YouTube page, the SCC Youth um, on YouTube. And then um, myself and Pastor Kyle, we have like a little afterglow. So, you know, yeah. after the party, it's live. after the party. And so we have a good time on Instagram um, called the Quarantine Q&A. And it's really just a safe space for our young people to come chat and talk about real life issues in real time um, with pastors and leaders who actually care about them um, and can help guide the conversation. It's a lot of fun, real laid back. So if you want to check that out, that's on Friday nights at nine o'clock on IG, same handle, the SCC Youth. So that's really what we got going on. And then we have a great social justice initiative called the PUSH um, Initiative. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about that um, later on. But yeah, that's what we got going on. Man, we're, we're, we're excited. We're excited to have you, uh, Pastor Kim, man. And, and we brought her on because she's not only a pastor, she's an activist in her own right. And she knows how to, to connect to community. And for those who are listening to our podcast this uh, today, uh, you all know that our focus has been for the generation that's coming after us, the new pastors that are coming in, don't know what they're doing. And so we brought an expert to the table uh, for us to listen to and just pick her brain on how to connect with our community. So, uh, Pastor Kim, that's exactly the question we're going to start with. Uh, you're being sent into your new district. How do you connect with your community? Man, okay, so the key word that we're going to really focus on today is relationship. Relationship, relationship, relationship. Like, gone are the days when you can go knock on somebody's door and be like, knock, knock, knock. Hi, I'm a believer in Jesus. Do you know God? Let me sell you some books and come in and sit on your couch and give you a Bible study. Like, you do that now, you liable to get hosed down with some Lysol and call the cops on, okay? So, you know, those days of being able to, to get in the community um, in that way are just over. Mm -hmm. 
People don't aren't going to open their doors for you. Not even just open. They're not going to open their ears to you if there is no relationship that's been built. And so the very first thing um, that needs to happen when you move into a new district is you need to decide to be intentional about relationship building before baptisms. And the reason why that's so important is because our church is notorious for bait and switch relationships. Mercy. I'm gonna come wow. into your community. Wow. I'm going to come into your neighborhood. I'm going to invite you to my seminar for six weeks, eight weeks. I'm going to give you groceries and babysit your kids. And I'm going to um, give you free giveaways and I'm going to do health screenings. Also that you can come to my church and add your name to my, my book. Mercy. And after wow. it's over, where are the groceries? Where are the babysitters? Where's the health seminar? I don't see them anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we're notorious for doing that. And it's created a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths about Adventism because we don't really care about the people. We care about the numbers. Um, so when you get to your district, the first thing you want to do outside of, again, what's happening in your church is develop relationships with your community by having intentional relationships that are non, what's the word I'm looking for? That are, you're not going for a reason. Like, I'm not going to call you up and say, let's have lunch because I want you to come to my 11 o'clock hour. Wow. I'm going to yeah. call you up and say, hey, mayor. Hey, governor. Hey, city councilman. Hey, school board superintendent. Hey, principal of the schools that are around my conference can't and, you know, around my area. Do you want to have lunch just so I can get to know what are the demographics of my city? Um, what does my city look like? What are my what are the needs? What are you as a leader in this city wrestling with that I can help you with? Hmm. And so when you go in looking for how can I help you solve a problem as opposed to how can you help me fill my church, then you go in being a problem solver and by default your church grows because mm -hmm. people are looking for solution oriented people. So if I come in as a problem solver, if I come looking to help you be a solution, you're more likely then to return the favor and what you know and then be open to whatever my church is offering. So um go down to your schools and have lunch like i mean just little small things just have lunch with your sponsor lunch for your yep. teachers no it's not in the budget it ain't a downline item but doing those small things creates relationships that will pay off in the long run um mm -hmm. go to the pta meetings go to the different things that are happening when your community has a community meeting go to the community meeting if you live in a subdivision and there's a housing association when does the housing association meet Ask if you can buy some cupcakes and say, hey, it's sponsored by so-and-so church. Um, or go and just, hey, can I do opening prayer for the, the housing association before you guys meet? And then be there. Um, I think presence is super, super, super important. So start shopping at the local supermarket that's there. You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean you got to go buy all your groceries there, but you can go. You're, listen, you're going to stop by McDonald's or Taco Bell or Chipotle on your way home anyway. Swing by the little grocery store and pick up a drink or a bottle of water and just talk to the people. And hey, how you doing? How's your business going? Man, how was, did the pandemic affect you guys at all? Man, you know, I'm praying for you guys. I'll see you later. And when you do those things habitually, those things help the people in your neighborhood know that you actually care about them and are a participant in the neighborhood as opposed to, we, you know, I talked on, a, on a, a session earlier or earlier in the week about being commuters. We just come into the neighborhood, do what we got to do for 24 hours on the Sabbath, and then we leave. Right. But when people know that you're in the community, they're more likely to be open to you. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's that's major. That's major. So, you know, um, how would you say then, like, for instance, you, you start talking about, you know, the mayor and, and things like that. How do you go about even getting in contact with the Good mayor question. or some city officials? Mm -hmm. OK, so first of all, we, we have to get out of the mindset that um, city officials or public officials are celebrities that are untouchable. They were voted in, right? Yeah, yeah. Their yeah. phone numbers, their email addresses, and their contact information is public knowledge. The reality is, is that most people, especially in our in our underserved communities, aren't taught how to have access to them. And so all that, you can literally Google it. You can literally look it up on your phone right now and look for who are your community representatives, who are your um, who you know city councilmen, what district do you, I mean, most people don't even know what district they live in, you know? So you can look that up. You can call them, you can send them an email, and if they don't respond to your phone call or your email, guess what you have the right to do? Show up, like literally drive over 
to your city councilman's office and go knock on the door and say, hey, hi, I'm pastor so-and-so or I'm brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. And I just wanted to meet you. I'm new to the area. This is my church. And I just wanted to see, you know, how things are going in the city. Um, what are some of the things that maybe you're you're trying to find solutions to and how can I help you in that area? So it's public knowledge. You just got to literally ask Siri. <laughs> you know, ask, Siri. ask Alexa. They can tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's good stuff, man, because I think I think that that is key to uh, understanding exactly what the city needs um, and also gaining support. As you said, um, that's kind of how I had to operate here. Um, I, you know, the city is super, super small. Um, but for me to really understand some of the things that were going on, I did have to go to, you know, city meetings, I had to go to school meetings, school board meetings, uh, you know, met with the mayor a couple of times. Uh, but that that's that's key. So for every, anybody listening, when you first get to your district, um, you know, after you meet with your elder and things like that, um, you you want to start meeting people who make decisions in your community yeah, yeah. Uh, to start figuring out you know, where the need is, um, who you can call on when you need to do some things, but also just so that you know your environment, right? You know your environment. Um, so we want to flip this now. So we talked about what can pastors do uh, mm -hmm. to get involved in the community. But listen, I am a pastor. I get sent to the middle of nowhere. Um, and I'm at a church where we come, we're a commuter church, as you said, we just come to worship and then we go home. And as a pastor that's been here for a couple months, I'm feeling like, man, God is calling us to do more. We need to get engaged in the community. Mm -hmm. How do I go about or what are some ideas that uh, I, as a first time pastor, can do to get involved in my get my church involved in my community? OK, so the very first thing is we got to stop doing events to say we did something. So yeah. doing a community assessment to see what the community needs mm -hmm. is step one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so often we're like, we're going to do a food pantry. And they don't realize that the people in their community have 12 food pantries yeah. right? and yeah. they don't they don't need more food pantries. Or if they do need a food pantry, let's say the other ones in the area, they give out canned food and produce, but they're in need of I don't know, snacks for their kids or they're in need of like actual meals as opposed to boxes. Because, I mean, let's just be real. If you give me a box full of fruits and vegetables and I don't know what to do with it, you right. just gave me a box full of nothing. That's right. So, okay. you know, finding out what the community needs are and that can be done through a block party where you're not trying to baptize nobody like you're just trying to find out what is it that you need. Again, that can be done through going going to get your hair cut in the neighborhood. And when you're sitting there talking to the local barber or whatever, just ask him, like, you know, what are some of the needs of the dudes that come in there? Talk to you know, talk to people around. Um you know, there's just so many different things. So every neighborhood, every every neighborhood has kids who go to school. Mm. Every neighborhood. I mean, you can pass out hot cocoa on cold days. You know what I'm saying? You can be there with an the umbrella when it rains or put a little tent out there so the kids don't have to stand out there in the rain when they've got to wait for the bus. Mm. So it's like just wow. finding creative ways to solve a problem. So if you know that OK, every year the city or there's going to be, I don't know, a science fair or whatever. Offer to be a judge for the science fair. I mean, these are just like little small things that sometimes we don't think about because we're, we're so heavenly minded. We're no earthly good. Mm -hmm. Put a basketball, literally go to Walmart and buy a basketball court, like the little frame and put it in your church parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. It's a <laughs> That's my soapbox, man. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Monday through Friday, there are no cars there. Exactly. So it's literally serving zero functionality and zero purpose. Give it purpose during the week. If we give our buildings purpose during the week, mm -hmm. then we don't have to work so hard for those 24 hours to try to matter or make a difference. That's good. Um, you know, another That's innovative good. idea, That's I say, like, if you have room in your church, put put a washer and dryer in your church. Wow. And then that way people in the community can come wash their clothes on Sabbath. Uh-oh, did I say that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They can go wash their clothes, and while they're washing clothes, they can sit and listen to the sermon. Or Come you can on. just play the sermon literally in that area. Many of our churches have rooms, have areas that aren't being used. You can get a you can get a couple washer and dryers off of Facebook Marketplace and put them joints in your in your you know multi-purpose room or whatever yeah. and let people wash clothes. You know what I mean? So it's just small little things like that, putting on putting some food out. It don't have to be, you know, a big 
dinner, but make some bag lunches. Put them out on a cart in front of your church and say, take one. You know what I'm saying? Fill your soul, fill your belly. Happy Sabbath from so-and-so church. No one's out there babysitting. Tell them, Don't take two. They might need to. But just let them, you know, be able to get some food and go without the pressure yeah. of feeling like they have to come to your church or they have to accept Jesus That's right. right now. That's so right. those are just, I mean, just some really small things that churches can do. Your your Sabbath school rooms are sitting there for six days of the week doing nothing. Can right. you can you rent your Sabbath school rooms to local small businesses so that these small businesses have a place to operate out of throughout the week? And they wow. can set up business hours and people can come and support their business through your church. Wow. So now instead of wow. we already know there's redlining, we already know that banks are hard, you know, will give, you know, black businesses a hard time with getting loans. I want to get a building, but I can't afford a building. Cool. You can use my building. So come now on. supporting a black business by giving them a space to run their business. Mm -hmm. And then they're not having to put you know, money into a $20,000 loan at a 29% interest rate. And they're able to then use that money to really build up their business. Now we've established relationship. Now when it's time for us to have an event and we need t-shirts, oh, we already, we already working yeah, with the t-shirt. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, little, yeah. you know, just little things like that of just wow. being solution oriented churches, um, I think we'll just solve a lot of the problem. And again, I know it's hard because in many of our churches, it's the same sister so and so doing. Yeah, I was, about, I, was, I was just about to ask you. Yeah, I was just about to ask you that. Yeah, it's the same people doing all the work all That's the right. time. Mm -hmm. But if you can just channel what you're passionate about mm -hmm. into being solution oriented, then you can do that. So, okay, your gift might not be to cook. We don't want you to cook. Like that, like don't be in the kitchen. Don't, don't be don't. in the kitchen. It's okay. You yeah. can keep your cottage cheese loaf at home. <laughs> We're not mad. We're not mad. But let's say that you knit real well. Okay, well, there's kids in your neighborhood who don't have hats in the wintertime. Or you know what I'm saying? There's there's people in your neighborhood or new babies who need blankets or whatever. So you and whoever get together, y'all knit some blankets. Okay, so maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you're a business person. Can you teach a class once a month or once a week on how to budget? You know what I mean? Or maybe you maybe you can cook. Can you offer a class to kid to teenagers who are raising their siblings and say, OK, we're going to we're going to do chopped, you know, whatever. Here's a basket of ingredients you may have at your house. Now let's talk about how to make that basket ingredients work for your family. So now I'm learning how to use the gifts or what I have to yeah. do more. You're not just offering me a fish. You're offering me a fishing pole. Aha. Uh -huh. I like that. I like that. You know, what's funny is that uh, as we're talking to connect to community, we've often left it to our evangelism team to kind of figure out those things, community assessment things. Uh, but I think even our evangelism as a church, it's flawed. We got to deconstruct this whole idea because we are very event driven. Mm -hmm. um, and because we are event driven, we're just there for a moment, but we're not there for a lifetime. And I think as you're talking, for those who are listening to this uh, podcast right now, there's a trap that when you come out of school that you have to throw big events in order for the community to come. But I love what uh, my sister, Pastor Kim, is saying. And I, I and I am taking this to heart because I always put it in my pocket every time I hear something that's really, really dope uh, that I will use not only in this district, but the districts to come after this is the whole idea of making intentional relationships without uh, strings attached. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think for a long time, we've been taught to, um, cast out our, our, our nets, yeah. catch them yeah. Yeah. so that they can help yeah. us instead of us using the gifts that God has given us mm -hmm. to help the community. So how can we reconcile for those who are kind of set in their mindset of, yo, I've been the community service leader for 20 years. Yeah. We've done this yeah. for 20 years the same yeah. way it's worked it brought one person to jesus over this 20 years and we're celebrating that one person that you brought way back uh when uh uh we were made in dirt you know so how do we reconcile and move our membership uh move our membership y'all laughing but y'all know it's true you know it's true yeah it is yeah. how do you move our our more seasoned uh members from that mentality to say okay Let's just let's just love like random acts of kindness within our community, not for the sake of, yo, we're the church, but simply to say, hey, we're with you in the struggle. Well, I think a couple of different things. So the first thing is we have to start diversifying our our boards or diversifying our groups. So if your community service department is all over the age of 60 and 70, 
you're going to get 60 year old ideas and 70 year old ideas. I'm not saying that those ideas are wrong. Right, right. And bad because not every not everything that we do is all bad. Um, right. We need to create bridges um, that of things that work and, and innovation. But I mean, there should be some young people with new ideas and fresh ideas on there. Um, you know what I mean? And so I think that the first thing is we've got to diversify our committees. I always think that, you know, when we're doing our nominating committees and we nominate somebody for a position, there should always be, even if you have a lead who's older, you need an assistant who's younger. You need, you know, you need your Paul and you need your Timothy, right? Yeah. Paul's got the wisdom that, hey, we tried this and it didn't really work in this demographic, but you need Timothy who's like, we're going to try something new. So you like need that. those. I mean, think you need both of those demographics. I also think that it has to be modeled by the pastor. Mm. Because, you know, people are generally set in their ways because they'll tell you, well, this worked before. Well, let's try something different. And so, you know, I think that sometimes you've got to be the one to walk on water first before Peter will get out the boat. Ooh. And so I think you've got to be the one to say, I'm going to I'm just going to again, I'm just going to show up in the afternoons when the kids get off the bus. Mm. And when they show me an A paper, I'm passing out popsicles. A bag of popsicles from Walmart is four dollars. Right. But you know what I'm saying? But when you right. start to build that relationship and then all of a sudden your members start to see these kids coming for BBS and the kids coming for programs and the kids joining Pathfinders, then they're like, how you do that, Pastor? Oh, that's that's just my homie. And then they're more willing to listen and adapt those ideas because they see them actually working. They see them, um, you know, in, in play. So I think that you have to be willing to model it yourself. I think that you have to be willing to create diversified, um, you know, committees in order to try to move some things and do some things. Mm -hmm. So those are really the two main things I would say, how do we get people to move forward? And then sometimes you got to unapologetically say, thank you for your time and service. We're going to do a nice little worship. Um, thank you for you with a nice little plaque and a going away present. And that we appreciate all that you have done in this volunteer position. And now we're going to bring some fresh, you know, blood in here. So sure. Sure. Um, that's not always the part. And that's not something you I want to just say, just replace your leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do believe if you have a leader who's not willing to change, they're not willing to do um, keep the gospel, but change the method. Um, then sometimes you got to be willing to say we appreciate you and we love you. Um, we'll see that's you good. on Sabbath. That's good. That's good. You know, I, I currently have a, a community uh, service leader and she's 75 years old. I love her to death. And what I love about her, even though she's been in position for a while, is that she's my main plug into my community because, again, her relationships aren't built uh, specifically on the church. It's built on individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think as we build on individuals, so I, I appreciate you bringing that point. Don't get rid of the leader. Just give new methods as you come in, because we're living in a world that is currently, uh, you know, technologies at our fingertips, information at our fingertips. They, they, they still read the, the physical newspaper um, to get their information. They, right. they won't go on their phones and everything. And so I think the merging of the two generations or the, the gap in between your generation and their generation will bring about change um, to, to the context that you're currently serving in. And so I think that's a good transition right into our next question. Because in the time that we're currently living in with the civil unrest and especially uh, the oppression of our black communities, um, I think uh, our sister, Pastor Kim, man, has a wonderful initiative that we can be relevant. So how can we be relevant in these times in connecting, not only connecting with our community, but also bringing them to uh, a place where they can be edified and that they can grow and move forward to work for their own um, understanding and then also to bring change about in their own communities. And then tell us about your initiative that you're currently working on. <laughs> that was that was a nice transition. That's smooth, that, that smooth, smooth transition. Smooth, 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 Listen, that was a smooth, smooth transition. Um, so, you know, the biggest thing right now that I believe we can do for our communities is to show up. Um, and I know, again, everything that I've said really boils down to just showing up. Yeah, yeah. And that's really difficult because as ministers, as leaders, just as people in general, we are pulled in a million different directions all the time. So when you get a chance to breathe and do something that is like not checklist related, you just want to just relax. But I think that creating spaces within our communities where we are seen and we are present is a major first step in making sure 
um, that we are able to be contributors to social justice and not just um, Facebook protesters or just social media activists. Um, and it's so so here's something I always advocate for pastors to do. Um, and I learned this from one of my mentors is take your office out of the office and take yeah, your yeah. office to somewhere local. So find that black owned coffee shop, even if you don't drink coffee, bring your hot cocoa and sit down and take a couple hours. There you go. And get your work done. Right. Yeah. And then make that a space that you habitually come to because you're going to hear the conversations. That's right. You're going to find out what's happening in the community. You're going to find out what's going on in those spaces by just, hey, so I come to this Starbucks or I come to this black owned business or this little donut shop. There's a donut shop um, in Huntsville called the Donut Hole. Black owned business. And they got some little tables in there. Come just sit down and you got Wi-Fi. If you don't. You got a hotspot. And just get your work done there and get develop those relationships and see the people that are coming and going. And when you create that presence, you can then advocate for these businesses. You can advocate for our people because you're one of us. So often people get upset because the only time you advocate or the only time you show up is when it's for your church's benefit or if it's for your revelation seminar or something that you want to yeah. promote. Then all of a sudden you Black Lives Matter. All of a sudden you we need to we need to rally around our community. Right. So creating a constant presence. So something that um, God just put in my spirit is an initiative called the Push Challenge. And so as Christians, when we hear push, uh, we always think pray until something happens. Right. But the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Yeah, so we yeah. Pray all day until something happens. But sometimes we have to be the ones to push in the direction of action. And so push is simply an acronym um, that anybody can remember and can do wherever they are to really help to build relationships and to make changes for social justice. So P and push the P stands for protest. Now we're not talking about writing. We're not talking about burning down nobody's Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But protest is simply the act of creating agitation using your voice or some other method. And so when we say protest, everybody always thinks of the traditional method of you know, running out in the streets, blocking traffic, holding up signs. But protests can look like a lot of different things. Protests can look like on your youth day, taking your young people to the steps of the government and having them write letters and drop the letters off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So protest yeah. protests can yeah. look like a social media, you know, blackout. It can look mm -hmm. like, hey, our church collectively is going to not support this brand or buy this particular thing. Um, so it's really just using your voice to agitate. That's what protest is. Some people may not feel comfortable going out in the street and protesting. So you can protest at your church. You can hold a prayer protest. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to pray for the people who are out there protesting. We're going to every hour for a certain time, pray for something that our communities are protesting again, you know, about. Mm -hmm. So P is for protest. U is for understand your rights. So we can go out here and protest all day, but if I don't understand what I'm protesting for, if I don't understand why my rights matter or why my life matters or why we need to defund the police or why, yeah. you know, our community is being plagued yeah, yeah. by drugs right now or why you can tell me all day to pull myself up by my bootstraps. But if I don't understand how money works, I will always resort to getting the dime bag or I will always resort to easier methods to make money mm -hmm. because that's that's all I know. So understanding your rights. So listen, it is not unchristlike to talk about voting within the church. It's not right. unchristlike like to talk about how to make and sustain wealth within our church. So teaching people about their right to protest, teaching people about their right to vote, even when you've been incarcerated, teaching people about their rights in terms of just, you know, life in general. Those are all things that you know are important so yeah. listen if you've got a counselor in your church if you even if you don't if you have a banker if you can call a banker to come in and talk to your congregation about um you know about interest rates about how to buy a home and all of these things that will empower our people to That's do good. better we got to stop screaming at black people we need to do better we need to do better but nobody's yeah. teaching us how to do better when That's we are good. literally two generations removed from slavery. Like wow. the civil rights, our parents are still alive from the civil rights movement mm -hmm. where there was a white only water fountain next to the black. That that happened in our lifetime. Wow. Yeah. So we have to remember mm -hmm. 
that a lot of people just don't know that they have the right you know, to do these things. When you get pulled over, what are your rights? Because if you don't know, then yeah, you'll let them search your car. Yeah, you'll let them arrest you because I don't know my rights. Mm -hmm. So understand your rights. S is for show up. So listen, we want to challenge the people to show up. Stop getting mad at these schools who are not serving your kids correctly. If you're not at the school board meeting where they're mm -hmm. making decisions about the curriculum. You yeah. mad that they only talk about Rosa Parks and Dr. King in February, but have you challenged the school board to do more? You know, yeah. so show up at the school board meetings, get your friends, get your, get your elders, get the deaconesses, get you and your family and pack some snacks and sit in the school board meetings. Like those things are very relevant. Show up at the, at the local elections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who we vote for yeah. president matters. But the people who make decisions about your water, about <laughs> about your local taxes, mm -hmm. about, you know what I'm saying, how much your homes are worth, yeah. about whether your neighborhood is going to get gentrified or not. Those are the elections that happen locally. And yeah. you need to be involved. You need to show up to vote at these things. And then the last one is H. And that's hold them accountable. And that means everybody. You need to we need to be holding our church leaders accountable for what they say, what they post, what they share. We need to be holding our elected officials responsible. And that means sometimes you got to be like a telemarketer. I don't know, you know, what you guys out there have experienced, but these telemarketers, they are on their job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, they will call you and be like, hey, Kim. And you're yeah, like, yeah. No, hey, <laughs> they be like, oh, yeah, by the way, so this is AT&T. And I just wanted to let, so before <laughs> you can even like weed them out, they done uh -huh. called you from a number you think is their, your homie that you mm -hmm. haven't talked to. Yeah, yeah. We got to do the same thing with yeah. our, our leaders. Like you can find their information online. Call them, call them every day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep calling Brianna Taylor's. I'm going to keep calling the district attorney for Brianna Taylor's case every single day. I'm going to leave you a message. I'm going to send you an email. I'm going to bother you until you do something. And so we've got to be willing to hold people accountable by bothering them, bugging them, staying in their face and staying on their mind every chance we get. So that way they know, oh, I'm not just going to pacify the black people. I'm not just going to yeah, pacify yeah. the minorities. Yeah. They're just going to be mad for two weeks and then they'll forget about it. And historically, they've been able to get away with it. We get mad for a little while. We forget about it. We go away. Then something else happens. We get mad and then we go away. They know that we're not going to continuously hold them accountable. So that's what the H stands for and push is the push challenge. Protest. Understand your rights. Show up and hold them accountable. And it's something that everybody can do even in a pandemic you can choose one of these letters and say i'm going to do that i'm going yeah. to get involved in this way so we've been challenging everybody find a way to push and then just keep doing it wow that's some good stuff right there man yeah that's some good stuff and so listen guys i think i think we've gotten we've gotten a whole lot in this episode as far as how to uh, uh, build relationships. We said that word again, building relationships with the officials in your community. You as a pastor have a responsibility to build uh, relationships with the people uh, that are running your city and that are influential in your city. Um, but then your church has a responsibility to build relationships with the neighborhood that your church is located in. Yeah. And if you're in these districts, that's most of your members live in uh, because, you know, there's this thing, there's this wall that goes up on Sabbath where, you know, even though you're in the community, you're not of the community. And so no a lot of times when we go into the church, we lose sight of the fact that we live here. Right. And so the needs just kind of go unnoticed. But then also, you know, we've been reminded that, you know, building relationships also means standing up for justice, um, standing up for the things that are uh, that standing up against the wrong things that are happening in your neighborhood. And real quick, since we got you here, you are the associate youth director. You are a chaplain at Oakwood for the person that hears this and says, all right, all this stuff is cool. Right. You, you talked about leadership. You talked about having a Paul and a Timothy. You're talking about pushing. But everybody at my church is old. Yeah. Right? Everybody at my church is older. And, you know, I don't know. I'm the youngest person there. What do you say real quick? And I know we're pivoting to something else. But what do you say real quick to the pastor that says I have no young people at my church and it's only me? OK, so this is what I would say. Um, you got to go where the young people are and stop waiting for them to come to you. So yeah, my yeah, yeah. suggestion would be adopt a school. 
right? Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of times people like to adopt elementary schools because they're cute, they little, you know what I'm saying? They're quote unquote easy to love. Um, but adopt a high school, adopt a middle school, and not just the Adventist high school or the Adventist middle school. Like adopt a school that's close to your church and then do things in that school. Go read a book once a month. You know what I mean? Go um, during report card time and just be there and congratulate the kids. Be there on the first day of school. Um, just different things like that. Adopting the school. Um, Pastor Bryant Herbert who is a pastor in South Central Conference, is doing a phenomenal job of working with young people. So he goes in the school and just once a week, he just does like a little mentorship program. He buys them pizza. They talk about life skills and that's, and then he's done. And so, but through that, it's opened the door for him to be able to work with these young people, build relationships with them and then be like, yo, you cool. You, you a pastor? Like you dope. And then now they're wanting to participate. They're wanting to come um, and be involved. Um, I also think that you have to be willing to listen and then do things that the young people want to do. You can't say you want your church to have young people. And then when the young people are like, hey, can we use your church for this event? Well, I don't want the pews to get messed up. And I don't, I don't want, you know, I don't want, it's going to be a lot of traffic in the church. I don't know yeah. about that. And what yeah. kind of music are y'all going to play? It's a built, like it's literally four walls and concrete. Yeah, it's yeah. going to burn in hell. Not because the church is going to hell, but because the earth is going to burn. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Pews, yeah. the little golden um, pulpit, the, <laughs> the consecration communion table, it's all going to burn eventually. So why not use what you have to edify people and to edify the community? There are a lot, there are a lot of churches that are close to colleges. Like mm -hmm. let the college kids have a poetry night at your church. Open your church doors so that it becomes a safe space for young people to come and do what they do. Yeah. And then when you want to do what you want to do, they're more willing to, you know what I'm saying, volunteer or help out. Help these kids move into their dorm. Mm -hmm. First Church does a great job of that. Um, yeah. Going to the non-Adventist universities uh -huh. and saying, hey, here's some detergent. Here's some laundry soap. Here's some coins for the machine. Hey, we just wanted to say we love you. Do you need help moving in? And now they're like, oh, I didn't even know this church was here. You know what I right. mean? So just right. different little things like that being involved in the community. But I would say definitely adopt a school, a high school, a university, and then get involved with those kids. And as the parents see you being involved, the parents will be, you need to go, hey, what you doing? You just hanging around here? Go to church. <laughs> Pass the zone, you know, or whatever. So yeah. Those kinds of things I think yeah. help build um, relationship. And then I would honestly say, you gotta be, you gotta be digitally relevant. You gotta mm. get on Twitter, you gotta get on Instagram. And you've got to be relevant so that they see you as somebody they can trust and as somebody who's willing to guide them um, spiritually. Every conversation doesn't have to be a Bible study. Facts. And as Facts. they develop that relationship with you, you'll, you'll see them start to relate to you, come mm -hmm. to you, and then come be with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's great good. stuff. That's yeah. great stuff. Listen, we have had an amazing time uh, today talking with Pastor Kimberly Mann. And... Um, Man, look, it's been great. We have been, listen, I hope you have your notepads, writing down uh, everything that is said. Um, where can people find you at before we go? Okay, um, so you can find us on, like I said, the SEC, the SEC Youth on Instagram, the SCC Youth on Twitter, and the SCC Youth on Facebook. So that's where we are. Um, if you want to know more about the PUSH initiative, you can email me at kman, K-M-A-N-N, yes, like David and Tamala, kman at scc-sda.org. That's kman at s as in Sam, cc dash s as in sam da dot org you can email me if you want more information about push um but yeah that's where to find me that's where to find us um yeah i'm here man listen we have had an amazing time thank you again for your time thank you for the wisdom listen she should have charged us for all this information she gave but it was free <laughs> for recharge worship and we just want to thank her for her presence for her wisdom and also for her passion if there's anything that you've gotten from this podcast it's simply this build relationships without attachments that you are or without expecting absolutely. a return in the end yeah. because stop, the stop return is kingdom stop catfishing people absolutely stop <laughs> that's, it. that's it yeah yeah that's yeah, it. yeah. <laughs>
That's but listen, it. this has been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me. And we just want to thank uh, uh, our sister, Pastor Kimberly Mann, just to, uh, for being with us on our Recharge podcast. Join us next week as we have another amazing guest who will be coming and sharing their knowledge on yeah, what to do in their first years of ministry. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll see you all next week. Peace. I'm looking forward to what you all are doing. I'm super excited to be a part of what you guys are doing. The mold that you all are, are, are building is, is a powerful thing. I've been watching how you guys have been collaborating and I just want to applaud you. I'm, I'm watching you guys. I'm learning from you. I'm admiring you. So thank you for having me on. Each other, man, the Academy Podcast definitely is yes, in support of Recharge Pod or whatever y'all going to call this thing, man. Whatever it is. <laughs> hey, this is Seth Yolorda. Yo, what's going on? This is Pastor Noah Weinstein. This is Pastor Puck Fordham. This is Pastor Tina Kerger. I'm Pastor Sean Moss. This is Pastor JD. This is Pastor Kimberly Mann. What's up, everybody? Pierre Quinn here. What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Kyle Crawford, and you are plugged in to the Recharge. 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 Recharge.